Hello there, this is Tamil, and this is the video about transferring your traditional art into digital. There's one thing that digital cannot replace for me personally. One of them is sketching with a pencil and a paper. That feeling is irreplaceable. Um, there's also inking and using black markers. It just gives it such a nice cool texture and variety with lines, variety with thickness of the stroke, and just a quick mention, the artwork that I've made for this video is completely free. It's going to be in the description of the video. You can just go ahead and download it from the Gumroad. Um, you can use it as you want. Just please don't use it for money, commercially, just personal use. And I'm sure we have a bunch of uh, sketchbooks from all the way in the back when you're like middle school, high school drawing. Um, there's so many cool sketches that you have and you want to digitize them. So you're just going to need a scanner. And a lot of times you don't need a super high quality scanner. They're all up to par these days. Um, the only thing I can say is that most of them all scan a4 format let me actually get that for you all right i got it here's the a4 uh, paper right next to my face i don't think you know my face dimensions but i hope that gives you the comparison the only reason why i bring this up is because most of the artwork that you're going to scan should in theory fit in one of these printers and scanners that are uh, bigger than this. They're very very expensive, but regular printers that are this size that are a little smaller um, they go used for like under a hundred easily and I have been using mine for like five years and They're all fine. They all have the same quality pretty much when it comes to scanning So I just want to go over super simply on the resolutions for printing, scanning, and all of that good stuff. Uh, but I will keep it as simple as I can for people who just want to scan things, just export it, and just have fun with it. Um, so this is the A4 size. And the A4 size is generally going to be um, 8.3 by 11.7. And if you're not from America and you're using the other system, which is secret, secret, it's a little bit better and easier to use in my opinion. Um, it is 210 by 297 millimeters. So what does that actually mean? What do those number means? Don't, don't worry about the numbers. It doesn't really matter. What actually is important that this is the size and most printers, if you go into the scanner settings, um, there's going to be many functions in there and most of the time you want to click the PNG for the highest resolution. PNG is like super high quality scan and if you're scanning, um, if you just want to have a bunch of scans and just save them somewhere and you don't want to have like huge amount of storage, then just click JPEG. Um, so that will be a lower quality, but it's going to be a lot of um, like less size. So we want to do PNG. And secondly, the most important part is the resolution of the scan. Um, and generally speaking, most scanners will support the 300 uh, DPI. DPI basically means dots per inch. What does that actually mean? A lot of people get confused about the quality. What is it? One inch, one inch in real life is going to be 300 dots. So 300 pixels of a little square of an inch. You can just multiply this little number by 300 and this little number by 300. And that is going to be our resolution for this scan. If whatever we draw over here, that's going to be the resolution. And if you round it up, if you don't go into super huge details and super complicated like pixels for pixels, on average, if you're scanning an A4 format, and that's your entire artwork, like it's from here to here, um, you go into 2,500 by 3,500. So very simply put, if you're drawing on your computer and you're doing 2.5K by 3.5K and you print it in real life with good quality, this should be about roughly the size of your artwork. And that is how you should be thinking about your artwork when you're creating it. If you want to make a print, that is basically it. Just multiply the 300 by whatever 
the size you want. Let's say you want like a 30 inch poster to print it in real life. Just multiply 30 by 300 and that should be your pixel count if you're doing it digitally. Um, so this also helps to not go overboard with your resolution so that your files are smaller. There is nothing too crazy. So, and here's my printer. Uh, his name is Brother, funny enough. I don't think it's any different or high quality from other printers that I've used. And this is a different sketchbook compared to my final artwork. But the point and method still stands. I usually just flip it up. I open the scanner. Most of the time, there's a little alignment on the side, like on the corner, and I like to align it to there. I set it up like this, and then uh, it's pretty good. And a lot of scanners, they do have the scan button. You can just click on it. Or uh, in my case, for me, it is easier for this bad boy to be using an app. I just open through my phone. And there's gonna be a bunch of buttons. Uh, in my case, you can just go to scan. And in here, it's gonna tell you how to scan. There's gonna be document size. In here, we can see there's different options. We can go into the A4 if you really want to. There's also automatic. And the most important part is just the resolution. So if you go to resolution, um, there's 300. Sometimes there's below numbers. Uh, and sometimes there's actually numbers above. I've seen some scanners go with like 600 and more. Most cases, don't worry about this. And here is going to be the quick time lapse of the sketching of the artwork for the final. Um, generally speaking, this video is getting a little bit too long and it's not a drawing tutorial. So I just wanted to share a little bit of my process, just talking about the fact that I love sea creatures, I love drawing uh, sea animals. So I just grabbed a few images from Pinterest and I just decided to pick up my mid-tone sketchbook. It's like a really nice square uh, mid-tone sketchbook. And in this case, I was using just a regular mechanical pencil. And on top, I just drew with an ink brush. For those people who don't have a scanner, um, I can recommend two things. You can either go to the library. A lot of uh, public libraries have scanners in them and they're available to people to use. In case you don't wanna do that, there's also the last minute solution of using um, a camera to take pictures. In my opinion, um, I have tried doing the camera thing, but it usually doesn't work out as nicely as a scanner. For people who will be using a camera or a phone, um, here are some tips. Uh, make sure that your artwork is going to be laying flat on the ground, 90 degrees, and your phone or your camera will be also 90 degrees, uh, looking down parallel to the table that you're taking picture of. You don't want any distortion. You don't want anything to look too angled. So that's the first thing. The light is going to be super, super important in this case. Uh, first of all, make sure it's very, very even and there's nothing too harsh from one direction. Um, ideally, you want like a couple of lights if you're taking a picture inside your room. Um, if you have one big light that is very strong, it's going to create this like weird blob of like uh, lightness on your artwork that will be very noticeable. Cameras these days, they fake out light a lot of times, they add a lot of noise and the image becomes a little bit blurry, especially phones, they have a lot of filters in them. Um, so if you're gonna take a picture with your phone, I highly recommend walking outside, probably midday, maybe like one to 2 p.m. when the sun is up and find yourself shade. Um, and in that case, if you put a, your artwork on the floor in the shade and you take a picture, it will have enough light, but also it's not gonna be harsh because sun is very, very harsh. But if you're in the shadow, um, all the reflective light will fill in the gaps and it will look uh, very even and uh, very good quality light for a picture like that. And here is the scanned image that I have from my printer. I think it looks pretty neat. It's definitely high quality. You can see um, the little marks, the sketch marks. Something people don't really notice is the color changes. So over here, you can see how some of the blacks, they turn into a little bit red um, because of how the paper is interacting with the light. That is something that you don't really get with digital work. So I have this here and a simple way to import this into 
uh, Clip Studio Paint will be first of all, I just want to crop it real quick because over here it's going to be a little bit faster and a little bit easier. So I'm going to just do that. Now we have ourselves the cropped image. Let's go into File. And in here we're going to go to Create New from Photo Library. This will allow us to not worry about resolution, formats, colors, like all of that good stuff. We can just click on the photo and a lot of times the contrast of the image that you either took a picture of or scanned is not going to be up to par of what you want. So we can go into the layer, go into a new correction layer. And in here, there's a lot of tools that will help you to fix that. There is brightness contrast. You can also try to use tone curve or we can go into lever correction. And in here, it's very simple. I know it might look complicated, but the left side is going to be black and uh, you can see that there's a lot of black. So obviously this little spike, that's going to be all of these blacks um, together. So you don't really need to fix that. And in here, this is gonna be the white side. And as you can see, the white doesn't really start until all the way here. So from here to here, there's no information of the white. And in a way it helps us because we can just push this point all the way here and as you can see, it improved the image a little bit. It gives it a little bit more contrast, but without losing details. Once we start going into these little three spikes, we're going to start losing details. So you can see that there's some stuff that's already blown out. It's a little bit too white and we're losing the small details. So I like to keep it a little bit above that. And this is going to be the before and after and before and after and it just it's, it's a small improvement that definitely helps us to see the image better and if we post this online it will just look nicer in this case i really like the mid-tone paper so as you can see this is not really pure white paper it has a texture to it it's kind of like a mid-tone uh, i want to say like 30% darker than usual paper um, and it has a really nice texture to it but if you really want to push it let's say you had a white paper here we're gonna go into edit there's a magic button that goes convert brightness to opacity so anything dark will stay on the canvas and anything white will start being transparent so this is a really nice way um, to create yourself an image that you can edit underneath. So as you can see, if we remove our color paper below, uh, these little dots, that's what it's going to be transparent. And I can pick pretty much any brush I want. And let's say I want to make the crab a little bit orange, make it dark, and voila, we are going to be coloring underneath. This is the easiest method that I have found in Clip Studio Paint to start working uh, on your image if you want to start coloring your inks. It is also awesome because in a sense, you don't really destroy any of your work. Um, I still have the original layer, as you can see. I can still use it. It's still intact. If I don't like this result on top, I can just play around with the filter again and convert it in the edit panel again and see what works and how to improve uh, my transparency. Another thing that I love to use for these kinds of illustrations is going to be halftone. So because we have this separated, we can go into the layer property. You can find that in window layer property. And by selecting the layer that we have for the inking, uh, we can go ahead and click tone. And now it's going to give us this cool halftone effect. There's many options in here. I have made tutorials on how to use this better. Um, but I like to push the frequency a little bit up so that it's a little bit more simplified and united. And as you can see, this gives us like this super vintage, nice look. On top of this, we can also color this layer. If you go into a layer color and for example, I love to go with some dark orange. And after we have that down, we can go ahead and click new layer and just pick any brush that you prefer. In this case, I'm using thick oil paint and I'm just using this slightly greenish color. And there we go. Now we can just add some texture to this. And in a way, this is so much more cooler than just using a simple color on top of a regular sketch. 
and overall it just looks really nice and illustrative. It feels like a vintage design or some kind of 8-bit video game sprite and this can go infinitely. We can just start filling this out with different brushes and if you don't like something we can obviously remove it. But let's say you don't want anything fancy, you literally just want black and white artwork, pure white like all the way here and pure black all the way here. What is the best solution in here? Well, there's many ways you can do this depending on what kind of medium you used. Again, we can go into the edit tonal and go to level and we can just all the way push it to like somewhere here. And if you zoom in, you can see there's still some parts of it that is going to be sketchy. The pencils are left over. So we just keep pushing until we have ourselves just like pure hard edges. And this looks pretty decent, I would say. We can click OK. And once you click OK, you can see there's still some parts that are really, really crispy, has this weird texture, has red spots in it. Well, that's mostly because we're compressing the color really, really hard. So in a way, the program is fighting the color. Well, there's a very simple solution for this. We can go into color, go into layer color, just go all the way black, click OK. And as you can see, pretty much everything that we've had was colorized into black. And back in the day, if you go into edit, there was no button that said convert brightness to opacity. If anything, this whole thing was like half as small. Um, there's many ways you can do this, but a super old school way of doing it, uh, like super, super like early 2000s, you can just set your layer to either darken or multiply. And by doing this, anything that is pure black will show up, but anything that is white will not affect the canvas. Here's the layer underneath. And with a simple brush that we already have, we can go ahead and start painting. And this was the way to do this with paper uh, way before <laughs> fancy tools that Clip Studio Paints provide us to today. It's really nice to have them, uh, but if you're using an uh, old computer or you don't have that button, there we go. That is how you would do it. And here's the time lapse that is from the iPad on Clip Studio Paint. I didn't use anything fancy, I just went ahead and grabbed watercolor brushes, I picked simple colors, and I set it to either multiply or overlay in order to preserve and keep that traditional look, not going too crazy with the colors. And as the last step, I just added a white outline to make it more contrasty. I just grabbed a marker brush and I went over uh, the outline and decided that that was it. I really like the result. It almost feels like a traditional sketch. And hopefully this got you a little bit more inspired and you learned something new about scanning or taking pictures of your artwork and hopefully it will be a nice addition to your tool set. Um, thank you so much for watching and just keep drawing.